So this is a brook trout. Look at it, it has, it's, it's identified by its worm-like markings on its back, these beautiful spots, these red spots with blue halos around them, but most particularly these white lines on their fins and this tiny little adipose fin in the back, which, which all the Salmonids feature. This one's called Salvolinus fontanalis. It means small salmon living in the springs. They are so amazing. Salvolinus fontanalis, the little salmon of the fountains. Welcome everyone to Minister Brook, my home river. It's also the home to the native brook trout, a beautiful fish that swims here in the northeast. But if we don't preserve and protect these beautiful, clean, cold, fresh, flowing waters, we won't have brook trout for future generations to enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to Fish Green TV, a new series about why we fish, how we fish, where we fish, and most importantly, how everyone can participate in the protection and restoration of this vital resource. It's our goal in the series to share the joys of fishing and how Fishing changes our perspective on this fabulous resource, clean, clear, fresh, flowing, running water. In my mind, nobody looks at water the same way a fisherman or a fisherwoman does. The urge to hunt and fish goes very deep in all of us, whether we're sport fishermen or commercial fishermen. We all learn to fish the same way someone teaches us. the Winooski River, named uh, for the wild onions by the Native Americans. It flows all the way to Lake Champlain, past the state capital Montpelier, and Lake Champlain then forms the border between New York and Vermont. This is the North Branch and one of its tributaries, Minister Brook. It's a lovely stretch of water with lots of shade, lots of riffles providing oxygen for the fish, lots of bank cover and stabilization naturally done. Sadly, the whole river is not that way. We're meeting up on the main branch of the north branch of the Winooski River with the friends of the Winooski who have taken upon themselves the task of restoring the river to its original form and shape in hopes of restoring the fish population. This is Ann Smith, executive director of the Friends of the Winooski. Lots of watersheds throughout the United States have organizations known as Friends of, and uh, the watershed means all of the water that goes from the headwaters or the very springs where the, the streams and rivers begin all the way to the source. In our case, all the way to the Lake Champlain that uh, forms the border between New York and, and Vermont. So. The Winooski is a, is a large watershed system. Um, and what are some of the things that the Friends of the Watershed uh, do to uh, enhance and protect this fabulous resource? Well, we do a number of different things, Alan. As you explained here today, we're trying to reestablish the riparian buffers that have been lost not only along most of the Winooski River, but really on most of the rivers in Vermont. When uh, settlers moved in, the flat agricultural land was down by the, uh, the river, so they were cleared and that's where we built our towns. Uh, so working right along the rivers and restoring those, is, is a, the buffers, is really important. Uh, we do uh, a lot of education and outreach because it's a big watershed and, you know, realistically, to make a difference, it really has to be individual landowners and residents of, of the watershed, so we talk with them a lot whether they're suburban or rural, talk with them a lot about how they can be, you know, better stewards of, uh, of the water resources. Uh, some other things that we do include water quality monitoring, 
Uh, we're working on some fish passage projects to improve uh, brook trout habitat by making it easier for them to get through some culverts. We work with residential communities to reduce stormwater runoff and reduce pollutants. Uh, and we also really just try to get people out on the river too because people take care of what they enjoy and use. How difficult has it been to convince people, you might say a little bit about what a buffer is. Um, no, I notice here it's, there's a great visual of the river mm -hmm. from that house, mm -hmm. but that's not so great for the river. This particular landowner, as you pointed out, has a really nice visual of the water itself and also the landscape on the other side. Uh, so he was very amenable to talking to us about a buffer, uh, but one of the things he did ask is that we uh, use mostly shrubs rather than um, large canopy trees. Yeah, we would prefer to do more of a mixed buffer um, and include you know, large canopy trees in it, but to be able to come in and put in these willows is, is great. You know, willows are one of the best uh, plants for holding banks. They're extremely resilient. They'll you know, get sheared off by ice and they'll come, come back even stronger. So we work with different landowners to, you know, try to accommodate, uh, you know, what some of their interests are and want them to, you know, enjoy the, the river as well. On behalf of all the trout fishermen who will uh, hopefully fish this stretch of river again, uh, thank you. Well, thanks for coming out, and uh, just for anybody who wants any additional information, uh, you can check our website, which is simply WinooskiRiver.org, and you can come out for a planting or a paddle or whatever we've got going on. Well, let's hope everybody does it. We can't all fly someplace where there's been a massive oil spill, but we can work right here yeah, at home. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thanks. Here we are in Roxbury, Vermont, at the Roxbury Fish Culture Station. It's the oldest fish culture station in Vermont, and one of the oldest in the United States. Many, many years ago, Vermont had become deforested, and so people realized that they had to increase the fish populations, and they were putting out 500,000 uh, brook trout per year out of this small hatchery. We're here today with uh, Jeremy Whalen. Jeremy, there appears to be primarily brook trout here. Uh, do you raise any other fish? Yes, we do. We raise rainbow trout also. This is the first year that this facility has raised rainbow trout. We recently just started raising them due to uh, disease concerns on Lake Champlain. The emergence of VHS in the Great Lakes has changed the way we've stocked, done our stocking here in the state of Vermont. They built this hatchery in 1891, and that first year they put out somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I believe it was 500,000 or so different wow. uh, fish out of this facility. And how many do you put out a year per annum? Currently, right now, this year, we are going to put out about 40,000 brook trout, yearling brook trout, which are 8 inches. We'll do another 40,000 rainbows, which are about 10 inches, and then we'll do about 8,000 trophy brook trout, which are for the uh, trophy trout program. We do a program also which is called Let's Go Fishing. That program involves going out and we work with a bunch of different clubs throughout the state ranging from Grange clubs to uh, local fish and game clubs, fire departments. What they do is if they have a pond in their area they can sponsor what we call a Let's Go Fishing event. And what it is is, is we'll bring them a hundred or so brook trout depending on the size of the event and they'll bring in the kids, we'll bring the fish up a few days before and they'll have a fishing event and it's designed to teach kids how to fish and getting them hooked on fishing for our future. This is Rich Kern, fisheries biologist for the state of Vermont. We were just at your hatchery and you're raising a lot of fish. Why do you raise those fish to supplement the, the existing population? Well, in some waters we do still we do have habitat problems where they can't sustain populations uh, to support recreational fisheries. And in those waters, we will raise hatchery uh, trout and, and stock those to supplement uh, waters and provide fishing opportunities. Uh, on the other hand, we do have a lot of waters which we manage as wild trout fisheries where no stocking occurs. Uh, those tend to be our colder waters. Most of them are in, in upland areas where we've got forested watersheds, but we do have some larger waters too that, that hold their temperatures and, and provide good wild brook trout uh, populations and fishing opportunities. What do you think the future holds for brook trout? 
Well, you know, we have to be vigilant and, and protect their habitat to conserve this important species. And, uh, you know, we do that in a variety of ways. Uh, we get involved in land development issues where there's regulations and we'll We'll, uh, we'll try to implement uh, protection of the riparian areas, make sure that the, the stream stays forested and shaded. Uh, wherever there's any sort of in-stream activity going on, putting in bridges or culverts, we want to make sure that, that those things are done in a way that aren't going to affect brook trout and provide continuous passage and continuity in those streams. Uh, and also working with uh, with angler groups and watershed groups to, to protect habitat and you know we can't do this alone through the regulatory process we need to get people involved and, and work with the private organizations and landowners to, to make sure we can maintain healthy habitat so we have visited the hatchery here and, and seen the propagation of, of trout the fish culture and we're going to next see them actually being stocked in the stream and then we'll see some kids having some fun with the brook trout here in Vermont Here we are in Middlesex, Vermont, at the Middlesex Fishing Day on Shady Rill, another tributary to the north branch of the Winooski River. It's a Let's Go Fishing Day sponsored by the state of Vermont. Throughout the country, there are Let's Go Fishing opportunities for parents to bring their kids to a local body of water, pond, lake, stream, and experience fishing for the first time and have success. So, let's go fishing. How many of you can remember the very first time you went fishing? Well, I certainly can. It's a vivid memory for me. And for these kids here today, many of them fishing for the first time, we think it will be a memory of a lifetime. This is an old morning event. It starts about 9 o'clock. People line the banks waiting to cast that first worm and catch that first brook trout the jewel of the stream. All residents of planet Earth here, uh, bears, um, birds, even reptiles that live near water, are introduced to fishing by the adults they live with. Some may be dragged to the stream, some uh, are just simply taken along for the ride, um, but invariably we're taught to fish by someone else and introduced to that sport. I think probably commercial fishermen and sport fishermen alike. So a day like today here on Shady Rill is the perfect opportunity to introduce under ideal conditions a young person to the fun of fishing. It's Can we take a nap? The group that puts this together, this particular event, not only uses the trout contributed by the state, but they raise their own funds and buy trophy trout as well. So we watched native fish that had been born in the stream caught by kids today. We watched the fish stocked by the state caught today. And we saw trophy fish caught today by kids on Shady Rill. And of course, with some children, fishing isn't enough. They have to get into the water. Eight inches. And at the end of the fishing day, sizes are recorded, prizes are rewarded, but the fish, in general, go back to swim again in Shady Rill. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Fresh, clean water. But without it, there will be no fish and no fishing. <laughs>